Hi, so in this video what I'd like to have a look at is convection currents. Uh, we can demonstrate that fairly easily in a home environment, but I want to take it on and just discuss why that's so important in terms of, um, of the planet that we live on, uh, and going beyond that to see convection currents, for instance, uh, in the sun and how that makes a difference there as well. These are really, again, fundamental bits of physics that we can find in our house, but which actually help us to explain what's going on uh, on a much, much bigger scale. So let's take a look at what we can do. Convection is something driven by gravity. So what I'm going to try and demonstrate for you uh, in a little while is the fact that if we take a container um, and um, put some water in it, which of course we really ought to do in blue, um, then we get convection currents formed only if there's a temperature difference. So what I shall do for you is to put in a block of ice to one corner, which itself of course is less dense than the water and it floats, but when it begins to melt in this water, uh, what we should see um, is that we get a downward current forming because this cool water, this water just above 0 degrees centigrade from the melting ice is more dense than the warmer water around it. So for a given volume it's going to have a higher mass therefore um, and that follows of course from an equation that you'll remember I'm sure from school days um, which just tells us that the density of an object uh, is equal to its mass divided by its volume. All right, and because it's mass divided by volume, the density is given in units of kilograms per cubic meter. And for water, this is a little bit less, at room temperature anyway, a little bit less than a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. So our cooler water is going to be dropping down um, underneath the ice block. However, as it drops, it will begin to warm. Uh, it'll begin to warm because of the heating effect of the surrounding fluid. And what we might therefore expect is that eventually we're going to get a current forming. So this cool water is going to drop here, it's going to begin to warm, it obviously can't go any lower than the bottom of the container anyway. Um, and because we've got additional water dropping on this side, uh, we've got to have fluid flow back up again uh, as this thing warms, just to keep things balanced, right? We can't forever be dropping additional um, fluid down one side of the container and not expect it to go up elsewhere. So this is the basis of convection, as I say, it's just driven by gravity. Uh, the more dense the material, the more the tendency for it to sink to the bottom. Um, so that's fine and dandy. Uh, I'll show you, or at least I'll try to show you a practical demonstration of this uh, in, a, in a little bit. Okay, so I could just... Um drop an ice cube in this vase that I filled with um, warm water earlier. Um, in fact, 10 or 15 minutes earlier, simply because I want the uh, motion inside the water after it was tipped in to have subsided. But an ice cube, I suspect, wouldn't show us very much. So what I'm going to do instead um, is to put in an ice cube that I've um, laced with ink 
in the hope that that shows things up a little bit better. Now I need to put this in fairly gently because I don't want to stir the water up myself. So here it goes right over into this corner here and hopefully you can begin to see already that things are dropping down from this ice cube as it melts. You should just be able to detect the, um, the downward current and once the ink starts getting released from the ice cube you should see it even more clearly. Um, so it's dropping down, I hope you can see, um, down this side and then coming along the bottom and you should see it rising up a little bit on the other side as it heats up again. So what's happening of course is that this cold water uh, coming off the ice cube is more dense than the warm water in the um, flower vase and so it's sinking down. It's just sinking down under um, the force of gravity of course, there's nothing more magical about it than that. Uh, but then as it warms it gets um, less dense again and so will rise up and of course eventually as we know um, it's going to just diffuse into the water and, and mix in general terms. So let's put another one in, see if we can watch that process again before the water gets too cloudy with ink. Okay, so you can see the water now coming down this side, cold water, and swirling round as it warms up again. But definitely dropping, I think you'll agree, on the left hand side of the screen. Uh, and as I say, this is purely driven by gravity. It's simply because the cold water from the ice cube, well, water and ink mix, I suppose, uh, is, as I say, more dense. So it's actually attracted to the earth in preference to the warmer water around it, which is less dense. There's no point in trying a third one because the water is beginning to cloud over now and I don't think we'd see anything in addition. So I'm going to resort to my um, sketch pad and we'll have a look at this in more general and how it applies um, elsewhere in the earth and in fact beyond the earth. Let's try this one more time. Um, given that the um, water itself is pretty well dyed with ink now, um, if I put a ordinary water ice cube in here, hopefully we'll see the same effect, albeit with cold water sinking down uh, one side of the screen and moving the ink out of the way. And you can see it, I hope, coming up on the opposite side of the vase now as well. Okay, so having told you what I expected to see and then shown you, I hope, um, a demonstration of how that actually works, let's move on to where we might find this elsewhere. Um, in the earth in general, we can find the effects of um, convection currents in the weather. Um, hot air is less dense and so it tends to rise, um, and so we can uh, begin to get uh, fronts forming um, from this effect. So we'll have warm air that will tend to go up. And that will be replaced by cooler air, which will tend to go down underneath it. And a lot of weather systems, of course, are driven. Uh, by this sort of thermal process. Um, but we can go beyond that as well. So if we look at the Earth in general, uh, we've got convection currents going on uh, in the fluid mantle a long way beneath our feet, um, at least in this country, a long way beneath our feet. So if we look at the Earth, in section, it's got various layers. So there are fluid 
and solid layers in this inner region here. It's a fairly complex region, we won't go into that. Um, but beneath our very thin crust, and this is definitely not to scale, this is just an illustration of my poor artistic skills, um, we have a, a fluid layer which contains the magma. Right, and the magma is what comes out uh, when we have, for instance, um, an erupting volcano. So it actually comes from beneath the earth uh, and erupts outwards. But it happens elsewhere as well. So if we look at um, the North Atlantic, for instance, so we have the North American continent coming down here sketched accurately as you can see uh, and we have the UK uh, coming over here the Atlantic Ocean in between uh, we've actually get to see magma um, in this central region here So this is a, the North Atlantic Ridge. Now where's this coming from? So what's this associated with? It's associated with the fact <clears throat> that we have a process called plate tectonics on the face of the Earth. So the Earth's surface, the solid part of the Earth's surface, is made up of uh, different plates which essentially float uh, on a magma ocean. So here's our solid crust on the earth and it's sitting on this fluid magma underneath and essentially floats on it. But the interesting thing is that we get convection currents in this motion magma. So we can have currents set up uh, in the fluid that, as in the case uh, of the North Atlantic, actually cause uh, two tectonic plates to move apart. So here we are over on this side and here's North America over here on the other side. Um, the Atlantic is actually getting wider and it's getting wider because these tectonic plates are moving away and what's filling the gap uh, in here is coming from uh, the magma which reaches the seabed and, and solidifies. And it turns out that um, tectonic plate motion is vital on the earth. It's vital for life, in fact. Uh, and we can talk about the sun itself uh, and the fact that it has convection currents. So the sun is, uh, is a gas. Uh, it's a great ball of mostly hydrogen. Uh, which is being converted through nuclear fusion to helium and there's all sorts of other things being created at the same time. But because of this process, because of the energy that's being created in the sun, we get slight differences in temperature at the surface. And so actually what we can find is that we have uh, convection currents going on uh, over the surface of the sun just as we get elsewhere in any fluid and a gas is a fluid any fluid that has temperature differences within it so in fact the surface of the sun is not featureless uh, you'll have all heard, I'm sure, of black spots on the sun. Well, black spots are simply areas of the sun's surface that aren't as hot as the um, bit of surface nearby. And so they come up looking dark uh, against the background of everything else. But it's also possible to see these convection currents at the surface. You can sort of see the cells that they create um, of contrast at the surface of the sun 
and there's some very elaborate movie footage in fact that's um uh, just come uh to public knowledge at least from um uh a satellite that's um that's observing the sun very very closely but we can take a snapshot of the sun and that's what i did a few months ago through my telescope with appropriate filters of course um, so I'm going to show you that now by moving the camera to my PC screen because it really doesn't come out on my printer very well. This is my image of the sun, or at least a part of the sun, taken some time back through my telescope uh, with filters that cut out 99.999% of the light coming through. So it doesn't damage the telescope or my eyes or the camera attached to it. Um, you can see on here though, obviously, uh, the surface of the sun, part of it there. But you'll notice that the surface is not a uniform colour. It's mottled, um, is probably the best description I can put on it. Uh, and each of these ref uh, reflects the fact that uh, all of these convection currents are going on um, in the sun near the surface uh, and at any one time one bit of the surface is not going to look exactly like the bit next to it and so we get this sort of mottled, uh, mottled effect. So I hope this gives you an impression now of the fact that convection currents not only happen on the small scale in our house uh, but they're actually vital for driving our weather systems, our tectonic plate movement, um, and right out into the solar system, uh, we've got the sun up there um, with its own little convection currents, its own enormous convection currents, I should probably say. Um, so convection is, is something that happens um, on the small scale and on the astronomic scale, and it's happening all the time. Uh, it's a rather fascinating, gravity-driven uh, process in physics. Bye for now.